Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a very practical application of the screw. And of course, we're dealing with a square threaded screw that is connected to a clamp which pushes two blocks together. We're applying a force to the edge of the handle, which is 10 centimeters away from the, from the center of the screw. And we're applying a force of 400 newtons, trying to tighten that screw. The lead of the screw threading is 4 millimeters and the diameter of the screw is 10 millimeters. So what we're trying to do here is find out what the applied force is to the block based upon these parameters. Also knowing that the static coefficient of friction is equal to 0 0.3 which gives us an angle phi of 16.7 degrees. What we've done so far is taken a look at this is the thread of the screw, this is the object that would be the the thread inside the bracket here and of course these are the forces at play what we're looking for is the force on the block which is the same as the weight on the block and so that would be represented by the w right here the weight on the block even though the screw weight is not really what's causing the force is the force applied to the blocks that will be represented by w the force f is the force applied to the turning of the screw and of course there's a relationship between this force F which is applied to the screw and the moment here which is 400 newtons applied over a radius of 10 centimeters so the relationship between F here and FP there can be done as follows the force applied to the screw is equal to the ratio of the moment arm R divided by the average radius of the screw multiply time F sub P. Since F sub P is 400 newtons, we can say that F is equal to the ratio of 10 centimeters, which is 100 millimeters, divided by the radius of the screw. Now the diameter is 10 millimeters, which means the radius is only 5 millimeters. So we divide that by 5 millimeters and multiply that times 400 newtons. So it goes in there 20 times, 20 times this, we have a force applied of 8,000 newtons to the screw. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a triangle summing all these forces together. So we have the weight of the screw, which is what we're looking for. That's a W. Now we also have the force applied to the screw, which we calculated right here. And then we have the reactionary force right here, which is caused by the normal force on the surface and the friction. So it's the vector sum of the friction and the normal force on the surface. And so that's going to be the reaction force right here. Now notice that the angle between the reaction force and the vertical here is going to be the sum of theta plus phi. So this is the case where you have to add the two together and phi is larger than theta. And, well, in this case, it doesn't really matter if it's larger or not. It's simply the sum of the two, which means that this angle here is going to be the sum of theta plus phi. That's the lead angle plus the angle caused by the friction. And the lead angle, let's see, we don't have the lead angle yet. We need to calculate the lead angle. So let's go ahead and do that. How do we find theta? Well, theta can be found by the ratio of the lead to the circumference of the thread. So that would be theta is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side, which is the lead, which is 4 millimeters, divided by the adjacent side, which is 2 pi times the radius, which is 5 millimeters. And let's take the arc tangent of that. So we get 4 divided by 2 divided by pi divided by 5. And then we take the arc tangent of that. And we get 7.26 degrees, close enough, 7.26 degrees, that's theta, right, let's see if we got that right, so that's 4 divided by 2 pi times r, correct. And so we add the two angles together, so that would be 7.26 degrees plus phi, which is 16.7 degrees. So that would be uh, 23.96 degrees. That's the sum of the angles. That's that angle right there. Now, to find W, what do we know? We know F. 
So F is a known quantity, and we're looking for W, so we're going to use these two sides, and we have this angle. That means that the tangent of the sum of the two angles, theta plus phi, is equal to the opposite side, which is F, divided by the adjacent side, which is W. And since we're looking for W, we can say that W is equal to F divided by the tangent of the sum of the two angles, which is 23.96 degrees. And F is a known quantity, that's 8,000 newtons. 8,000 newtons divided by the tangent of 23.96 degrees. And let's see what we get. So we add that to plus 16.7. Uh, Take the tangent of that and take the inverse and multiply it times 8,000. And that means we have a total force of very close to 18,000 newtons applied to the clamp, which is quite a bit of force. So you can see that because the diameter of the screw is so small and the moment arm is relatively large with a fairly benign amount of force, a small amount of force, 400 newtons is not that large. By applying a 400 newton force, we can apply a force clamping the two pieces of wood together of 18,000 newtons, which is quite a large force. And you can see, again, it's the advantage of using a screw, gives you the mechanical advantage, and we use the very same principles here to calculate the force required or the force of, uh, between the two blocks and the, and the, and the clamp by using the same concept as the wedge, and that's how it's done. And by the way, part B, how to find the torque required to loosen the clamp, we'll do another video for that. So that will be video 29. So you didn't forget about that. It's just simply coming up on the next video because after all, I'm out of bird space.